All right, this is going to be an implicit differentiation example. Um, and it kind of goes beyond the whole, like, find dy dx part, which is uh, definitely you need to be able to do that. But you also need to be able to kind of understand and interpret. So uh, we have x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 4. And first thing we want to do is find dy dx. So the way that I do that, my first step is I write that I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of this thing. And I'll do that. So I'm going to kind of highlight each step. So the first thing I'm going to do on the left is take the derivative of x squared, which I know is 2x. Um, now I'm going to take the derivative of this product, which is xy. So that's going to be um, first, which is x, times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus second, which is y, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of x is 1. So I get that. Um, now I'm going to have to use a chain rule on y squared, because y is a function of x. Um, it's implicitly defined here. So it'll be 2y, and then since y is a function of x, I have to multiply by the derivative of y, which all I know is dy dx. And then on the right-hand side, uh, it's going to equal the derivative of a constant is 0. So the two things people forget is they forget that uh, y is a function of x, so the derivative of y is going to be dy dx. They forget to use the chain rule in that case. And then the second thing they forget is that the derivative of a constant is 0. And if you forget that, your derivative ends up really messy. Uh, now I move everything that doesn't have a dy dx to the right-hand side. So I'm subtracting 2x, I'm subtracting y. Um, and I'm going to, on the left-hand side now, factor out dy dx to get dy dx times the quantity x plus 2y. And then I'll divide through by that. And I have dy dx. All right, so that's the first part of the problem. The next thing I want to do is I have all this. So I know the relation, the uh, implicitly defined function, and I know dy dx, and I want to know when is the slope 0. So to do that, I'm going to need dy dx to equal 0, which really kind of amounts to the uh, numerator equaling 0. But anyway, I got that equals 0, and then cross multiply it. So I need the numerator to be 0. So this will give me a relationship between x and y when the slope is 0, but I need to still find x and y. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the relationship, x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 4, and now I know that y equals negative 2x. System of equations, I'm just going to substitute in. So I do that. Hopefully this isn't too challenging for you. Um, simplify, simplify, simplify. And finally, I find that the x-coordinates are uh, plus or minus 2 over radical 3. But I really want the points. So uh, to find the points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I know that uh, y equals negative 2x. So uh, when x is 2 over radical 3, uh, what I need to do is just multiply that by negative 2 to get the y-coordinate. So negative 4 over radical 3. And then uh, when it's negative 2 over radical 3, the y-coordinate will be 4 over radical 3. So those are the points on um, the curve where the tangent line is horizontal or where the slope of the curve is zero. Um, and then I'm going to answer a similar question. I'm going to answer when the slope of the curve is undefined. So uh, this can happen quite frequently with implicitly defined functions, that the uh, curve will have places where the slope is undefined. So I need the denominator to equal zero if the slope is going to be undefined. So uh, let's start with that. We have x plus 2y equals zero. This will give us our relationship between x and y when the slope is undefined. Um, and I'll do pretty much the same thing. I'm going to go back to the original. And I'm going to substitute for y. Uh, you could also, somebody mentioned in class when we did this, uh, that it's a little easier to say x equals negative 2y and substitute in for x and solve for y. But, you know, I'm not going to do it that way. So I'm substituting in. Now hopefully I get it right. Uh, work with some fractions here. Four, I'm going to multiply by 4. Clear out the denominator there. And now it's not so bad. 3x squared is 16. x squared is 16 over 3. So x is going to be plus or minus 4 over radical 3. Now remember, those are the x coordinates. What I really want are the points on the curve. So uh, 4 over radical 3, what I need to do is... Uh, since y equals negative x over 2, I need to divide that by negative 2. So that'll give me negative 2 over radical 3. And then similarly, when I have negative 4 over radical 3, divide that by negative 2, it gives me 2 over radical 3. Um, 
And those are my points. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do, I'll show you a GeoGebra screenshot where what I did was I implicitly defined the curve. Um, the way I did this, actually, a little differently, I just did it, I let the program do the work. So I graphed y equals negative 2x, found the intersection points, and then just plotted lines through those. Uh, then I graphed y equals negative x over 2, found the intersection points, and plotted the lines through those. But uh, if you want to try to confirm that, you'll see uh, the slope is horizontal at the point, uh, well, rather, the tangent line is horizontal, the slope is 0 at uh, points A and B, and the uh, tangent lines are vertical, and the slope is undefined at the point C and D. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. Good luck.